Good morning, I'm Dorf Feifelson, and I'm going to present our paper Considerations and Pitfalls in Controlled Experiments on Code Comprehension. So if you're here at ICPC, you're interested, probably interested in code comprehension, and you know that understanding code is hard. You may even be interested in actually measuring how hard it is. The major is realization that there are many factors that have an effect on how hard it is to understand code. However, under, uh, conducting experiments on understanding code is also hard because there are all these set factors need to be taken into account. At the most basic level, we need to consider four factors. One is the code used in the experiment. Two is the task that require the experimental subjects to perform. Three is the metrics which we use to measure their performance. And four, exactly who are the experimental subjects to begin with. So let me give you some examples. One of the main considerations regarding the selection of code is that it should not be too easy or too difficult. This is an example of code which turned out to be too difficult. It's pretty short, it's only 11 lines, and only three of these lines actually do anything. But they do this by using uh, bitwise operations and hexadecimal constants to mask bits and so on. These are operations which are not very commonly used, so many people do not have experience with them. And as a result, the code turned out to be too difficult for experimental subjects. Here's another example. This example is actually misleading. What this does is to calculate the minimum of a set of input numbers. But the variable used to hold the result is called max instead of min. Uh, this could point uh, subjects in the wrong direction and mislead them to think that it calculates the max instead of the mean. Another possible uh, problem is that you can guess the answer to the task without actually looking at the code. In this example, the task was to recall a, a variable name from the code you just saw. But let's look at the uh, given options. Uh, this va variable name has uh, a verb instead of a noun. So it's pro most probably a function name and not a variable name. This variable has includes the stra strange word math name, and this one has the strange word path num. Both of these words are unreasonable, so these two variable names also do not make much sense, which leaves us with only one option, which is a reasonable variable name, full path name. And this is indeed the correct answer. And we could guess that without even no knowing what the code was. Another problem is using distracting names or layout. For example, this function uh, is called ayaoyaki, and in it there's a variable called megkaki. Uh, and also look at the, at the layout. The, Type is here, the variable name is here, the initialization is here. So when your experimental subjects are reading this code, they're not really trying to understand it. They're trying to figure out what the hell is going on and why does it look so strange. That is probably not what you uh, conducted an experiment for. Going on to uh, the task. Uh, the main consideration regarding the task is which task to use because the task actually defines what you mean when you talk about understanding the code. The uh, simplest uh, possible task is just to read the code and understand its structure. The next level is to pass the two code and understand the syntax. Higher up is interpretation task. This means to, that you understand the instructions and you can follow what the code does, for example, in order to figure out what it prints in the end. Uh, real comprehension is to understand the functionality uh, of the code. This is an example of this sort of task is to give a name to a function. Higher up is using an API, which implies black box understanding, or correcting a bug, which imp implies white box understanding, or modification of the code, which implies even a higher level of white box understanding. And at the very top, there is a factor in the design, which implies the understanding of uh, the abstractions embodied in the code. A major pitfall in designing a task is that you need to select a task that uh, actually requires understanding of the code. Uh, the problem is that subjects may be lazy and some of them uh, may take shortcuts if it's possible to solve the task without really understanding the code. An example was guessing the uh, variable name uh, in the example I showed previously. Let's go on to metrics. We usually uh, measure understanding using two metrics. One is the time to get the correct answer and the other is the average error rate. But these two metrics may actually measure different things. These results give an example using variations on a canonical for loop for i equals zero, i less than n and i plus plus. The canonical version, which I just showed, uh, takes about 11 uh, seconds on average to understand and produces a low error rate. But if we change it, for example, if we 
it changes the plus plus to minus minus and create a loop that counts down instead of up, the main effect is to increase the time it takes to understand this loop by about four seconds. Other changes, for example, changes changing the boundary condition starting from one or doing less than equal to n or less than equal to n minus one, etc., uh, create uh, more errors and does not affect the time so much. In particular, if you make two such uh, changes, uh, more than half of the subjects make mistakes uh, in interpreting the code. This is probably not a, because it is so hard to understand it because they do not notice the changes. Uh, this code violates common idioms and that's the problem with it. Finally, let's talk a bit about subjects. Uh, the main consideration about subjects is that they should be suitable for the study. We need subjects with appropriate experience and we need to exclude subjects who lack required skills. The common distinction between students and professionals is not necessarily a relevant uh, criteria. So the take home message is that lots of things can undermine an experiment. A lot of things can go wrong. And the, our goal in, in listing all of these considerations and pitfalls is to help you to try and avoid them by learning from past experience. So good luck with your experiments and may the source be with you. Hello, everyone. So um, my name is Chaeyong Rakit Resagun. I'm the chair of this session of empirical studies in program comprehension. Okay, so the first paper, um, the consideration of uh, and pitfalls in control experiments on code comprehension. Um, we are open for the questions now. Okay, yeah, the first one is that uh, by Marvin, what was the process that led to this list of pitfalls? Is it based on, uh, is it all based on your own experience or did you look at the set of papers specifically for this? Uh, no, basically it's my experience. So it's, so it's uh, like 10 years of experience of uh, working in this area and, and performing experiments and, but, but also reading lots of other papers. I didn't read them. Most of them I didn't read specifically for this paper. Uh, I did uh, make some additional searches for, for stuff, but, but basically it's, it's papers that I read over the years and, and things that bothered me and, and they sort of gathered in my head. So sort of, I, I gathered all sorts of peeves and, and, and uh, uh, annoyances with various things that I saw and various things that happened to me. Or, or, so, so some of them are problems that, uh, wrong things I did myself or my students did and, and we, we only figured out uh, uh, after the fact that what we had done uh, was not optimal or was uh, downright wrong and, and problematic and, and uh, this sort of accumulated and, and I, I just uh, uh, wanted to, to share my experience and, and uh, sort of list them all together. All right, thanks. Um, okay, uh, while waiting for uh, the next question, so may I have the follow-up follow question that from your experience, you think which one is the most uh, what to say, the most frequent one of the pitfalls that might occur? Uh, I, I think that the biggest problems are, are with code, with, with, uh, with choosing appropriate code or with choosing, uh, uh, not falling into various pitfalls regarding the code. But I see we have a few more questions. Yeah. Uh, so Fabio asks, um, based on your experience, did you notice many ICPC papers that are biased by this identify pitfalls? Uh, I think maybe m m many papers have uh, various problems, uh, but, but uh, is it a lot of them or, or which ones? It's sort of, I, di I didn't really do a statistical analysis on this. Okay, maybe we have uh, another one. Um, how many of the experiments reported in the program comprehension subject to these pitfalls? 